Gospel according to Matthew. Some Pharisees approached Jesus and tested him, saying, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any cause whatever? He said in reply, Have you not read that from the beginning the Creator made them male and female and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife? and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore what God has joined together, man must not separate. They said to him, Then why did Moses command that a man give the woman a bill of divorce and dismiss her? He said to them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful and marries another, commits adultery. His disciples said to him, If that is the case of a man with his wife, it is better not to marry. He answered, Not all can accept this word, but only those to whom that it is, that is granted. Some are incapable of marriage because they were born so some because they were made so by others, some because they have renounced marriage for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Whoever can accept this ought to accept it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now that first reading, boy, our principal said did a really good job at reading some of those funny words, didn't he? That was hard. See, if you apply yourselves and pursue perfection, you will achieve excellence like he did there in being able to read and do those things. But you know what the good news is? Even if we make a mistake or we stumble a little bit, it's okay. Because God loves us. Because why does God love us? Who are you? You are an infinitely valuable, one-of-a-kind masterpiece created by God for a mission. And if God loves us that way, do you think he's not going to still love us if we made a mistake? Do you think your mom and dad aren't going to love you if you do something wrong or make a mistake? They can't help it. God can't help it either because he's perfect and he loves us perfectly. So in the gospel today, we hear Jesus talking to the people who were trying to set him up. They were trying to trap him. So he asked this really hard question because they wanted to get him to contradict what Moses had said. And Moses said, hey, look, God let you get divorced because your hearts were hard. Now, it was the apostles, it was the leaders who asked Jesus the question, well, th if this is the case, isn't it better if we don't get married? Obviously, most people get married, but this was the leaders. This was the leaders of the church. And Jesus said, this is a hard teaching. This isn't easy. But there's three people who don't get married. People that God made that way so that he can't have normal relations. People that man made that way. Sometimes men would do other things to men so that they couldn't have regular relations. But then the third is some give up marriage for the kingdom of God. And so that's what I did. It's very, there's a good distinct possibility that if this passage wasn't in the Bible, I might not be your priest because I probably would have gotten married because I met a beautiful person. I was dating this person and it was a good, solid Christian relationship. But I felt that God was inviting me to give up marriage so that I can be your spiritual father, okay? 
See, all you guys are my spiritual children, and that's why I pray for you, and I want the best for you, and I want you to be happy. And the best way to be happy is just listen to God. Listen to what he says. Try and follow his commandments because he's perfect. He's perfect. And he knows exactly what we need to do to be happy. In that opening prayer, there's a thing in that prayer that will confuse a lot of people, okay? Because sometimes people don't really know what the Catholic Church really believes. And it said something strange which could be easily misunderstood. It said, Lord, let us merit our redemption or something like that. It, it seemed to indicate that, that it was our merits who somehow, what, what it makes us worthy of heaven. But you have to understand what that prayer is saying. I cannot save myself. There's nothing I can do by myself that would somehow get me into heaven. But you know what's cool? Jesus says, whatsoever you do unto to others, you do unto me. So in other words, we are called to be one with Jesus. And if we give ourselves over to Jesus, like through baptism, and then by responding to his grace and doing what he wants us to do, we are more closely uniting ourselves with Jesus in the mystical body of Christ. And it's Christ who has merited our salvation. It's Christ who gave us the possibility of getting into heaven because he died and suffered for us. And so the only way we can merit it is by being united to him. If we die to ourselves and take up our cross, that means that we're living no longer for us and we're closer and closer to being one with Jesus. And that's the only way we can merit it because we will be part of the body of Christ who merits our salvation. This is kind of strange because it sounds like the prayer is saying, yeah, I just have to work hard and do the right thing and I can get to heaven. Can't do it. Our works... Our, will not merit heaven but our works reveal that we really believe this stuff if you every time you listen to your mom and dad you're following God and every time you don't you're being tricked by the devil all right and and the devil wants us to be unhappy he wants our life to be miserable he wants it to be nasty but if we follow God and we listen to him and do what he asks of us, we'll be really happy. Like the way it's supposed to be for most people, they meet a person, they, they come together, they start dating, and they live a very pure and holy life. They, they just live a whole, holy, pure in life. And then when they get to the point and they say, you know what, I want to give up my life for you. And the other person says, sounds good to me. I want to give up my life for you. Then they go to the church and get married and then they can begin to start living together and sharing their life in a very deep and profound and intimate way. But the world has it all upside down and backwards. That's not how most people do it anymore. But if you're a Christian and you know the teaching of the Jesus, that's what you do. Because Jesus says marriage is so awesome that when two people say yes to each other freely and without, without force of any kind, they can trust that that word is going to get them until death because that other person will never give up on them. And that's the promise they make at marriage. And I, through God's grace, said, you know what? I'm going to give up this beautiful sacrament of marriage so that I can be freer to give myself more, more completely to you guys, okay? and to pray for you, and to do whatever I can to help you know who you are, which is an infinitely valuable, one-of-a-kind masterpiece created by God for a mission. And guys, what will happen if we pursue perfection? 
we will achieve excellence. And why in the world do we want to achieve excellence? To glorify God. I bet you one of these days you guys are going to know that and everybody's going to be able to say that, okay? I love you guys. Let us pray that we can love each other and try and treat everybody, all your classmates, as you would treat Jesus himself. If you do that, our world's going to be a lot better place. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us stand and bring our prayers of intercession before the Lord. For the universal mission of the church to all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that they may always work for peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our students, that during this academic year, they may devote themselves to their studies and share what they have learned from others, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our families, that the gentle Queen of Peace may reign in every home, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have entered the dimension of eternal life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Mary Tyska, for whom this Mass is celebrated, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own special intentions, which we mention in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray that all people pay attention and and understand what things are and, and don't fall prey to people trying to confuse them and tell them things that aren't true. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of the people gathered here before you, those spoken and those kept in the silence of our hearts. Answer them insofar as they meet our deepest needs and are in accord with your holy and divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Our music at the preparation of the altar and presentation of gifts is number 582, Rain Down, number 582. 